Hello students, in this lecture, we start uh, chapter five and that is about identical particles. The first topic is two particle systems. Okay, so let's start. As we know that a state of a single particle can be represented by psi as a function of R T, where R rep representing the special coordinates and T representing time. Now, to update the system, consist of two particles now. So simply we can update uh, this state function by introducing now uh, another special coordinate that is R2. So now the state becomes psi as a function of R1, R2, T, where R1 representing the position of uh, particle one and R2 representing the position of particle two. And time is simply by T. So psi as a function of R1, R2, T, representing that state of a two particle system. Now to study the time evolution of uh, uh, this function, we simply take the help of Schrodinger equation. And that is I H cut partial psi over partial T equals H psi, where H is nothing but Hamiltonian of the system. And that can be written as H equals minus H cut square over two M one del one square, minus H cut square over two M two del two square plus V function of R1, R2, T. Here we introduce M1, M2, just uh, claim that we are talking about two particle systems. And uh, you see here that potential is function of time T. So uh, from here on, you will see that uh, we will discuss different systems uh, having potential as a function of time T. Now, once we have uh, a wave function, then it is important, important to check either this wave function is normalized or not. For checking this, simply we have a definition, integration from minus infinite up to infinite psi magnitude square dx equals one. So in case of uh, psi as a function of r1, r2, t, we simply replace uh, psi by psi of r1, r2, t magnitude square or modulus square where we simply write now d r1 cube p r2 cube equals one. So what does this equation telling us? So meaning of this equation is just simply that it is the probability of finding the particle one in uh, the volume d r1 and the particle two in the volume d r2 cube. So psi must be normalized because this is the condition for uh, having the function for such for any system to be normalized. Note that for time independent potentials, we obtain a complete set of solution by simply using the technique of separation of variables. And that by the help of the separation of variable, variables technique, we get psi as a function of R1, R2, T equals psi as a function of R1, R2, into exponential power minus i e t or h cut. We are simply this part representing the special wave function psi that satisfies the time independent Schrodinger equation. So now you see minus h cut square over 2 m1 del 1 square psi minus h cut, two, uh, h cut square over 2 m2 del uh, to square psi plus V psi equals E psi, where E is uh, the total energy of the system. Here is equation 5.6 representing the two particle systems, M1 and M2, where E is the uh, total energy of the system. This equation is difficult to be solved, but two special cases can be used to reduce the system to one particle system. First, non-interacting particles, second, central potential. Let's uh, start our discussion with the uh, uh, bosons and fermions first. Both are uh, different families of uh, particles. Some particles uh, belong to the bosons, some particles belong to the fermions. Having uh, any type of the family in a system, uh, the way how to represent them by a wave function, that is very important for us at this point. So let's start the discussion. Suppose. Suppose a particle one is in state psi a, 
and particle two is in state psi b. Now keeping both in a single state, that would be like psi of r1, r2, representing by psi r1, r2 equals psi a of r1, psi, two of r, psi b of r2. This equation assumes that we can tell particles apart. Otherwise, it makes no sense to claim that particle one is in state A and particle two is in state B. Classically, yes, we always tell the particles apart simply by painting one particle by red color and the second one by green color. But if particles are small particles, then quantum mechanically, the situation is fundamentally different. Now you can't paint the electron red because it raising doubts as to whether the two had switched places. The fact is that all electrons are identical in a way that no classical, no two classical objects can ever be. So quantum mechanically, quantum mechanics accommodates the existence of particles that are just indistinguishable in principle. Hence, we can construct a wave function where we actually uh, representing the board particles in a way psi plus minus r1 r2 equals a of psi a of r1 psi b of r2 plus minus psi b of r1 psi a of r2. Here this theory admits two kind of identical particles bosons and fermions. We have a plus sign for the case of bosons and we have a negative sign for the case of fermions. All those particles having integer spin are called bosons like photons and uh, mesons, and all particles uh, having half integer spin are fermions, like protons and electrons. Bosons' uh, states are symmetric in nature, uh, symmetric under interchange, where you simply write psi plus r2 r1 equals psi plus r1 r2. But fermions are anti-symmetric under interchange. So it means whenever you interchange two fermions with each other, you will get negative sign here. So this is the way you will write like psi minus r2 r1 equals minus psi minus r1 r2. Okay. Now, if we have a case in which uh, uh, two particles are fermions. So in that case, when we have two particles are fermions, uh, then uh, both can't occupy the same state. Uh, this is uh, simply according to the principle of Pauli exclusion principle. Hence, in the case when we have psi A equals psi B and uh, let's electron occupy the same state, then uh, the expression is psi minus R1 R2 equals A of psi A R1 psi A of R2 minus psi A of R1 psi A of R2 simply we simply replace psi b by psi a, and you see now we have uh, two expressions which are actually same, and then they, we will simply get zero. It means we are left with no wave function at all. That is the conclusion. Conclusion is, it is the consequence of the rules for constructing two particle wave functions whenever we apply for the fermions. Next, we have a definition of operator which is called exchange operator. That exchange operator actually help us to interchange, interchange two particles. So simply, if one particle is in state psi A and the second is in psi B, but there is more general way to formulate the problem, let's define exchange operator P that will help us to interchange the two particles. Simply, if you operate this P on psi of R1, R2, we get psi of R2, R1. And now if you operate again this uh, P operator on this wave function, you get the same function again. It means that P square psi of R1, R2 equals psi of R1, R2, where P square equals one. And uh, it means that uh, P equals plus minus one. And these are nothing but eigenvalues, plus one and minus one for P. Here, we have another conclusion that is for identical particles, P H commutes to each other. It means it commutes to each other. That is uh, the operator operates on identical particles and the configuration remains the same. And uh, 
the energy remains the same as well. Please note that the Hamiltonian treats the particle same, keeping m1 equals m2 for identical case. Now important is to understand what is the meaning of commutation. When two operators commute, those operators have the same set of eigenstates, but the eigenvalues could be different. So we have a psi of r1, r2 equals plus minus psi of r2, r1. Please note plus for bosons, as I already mentioned on the previous slide, and minus for the fermions. If you change the coordinates, and we get the same function with positive sign, then it means the wave function is symmetric. And uh, if uh, we get uh, the different wave function, then it means we get uh, we have anti-symmetric case. So we are familiar with the cause of fun x function, where if, even if you put the minus x, we get the same result uh, as we get the result for cause of x. So this means cause of x function is a symmetric function. And uh, if you keep uh, minus x uh, in this expression, you get minus sine over dx. So it means sine of x equals minus sine of x. So these two are very good and easy examples to understand the symmetric and anti-symmetric functions. OK, now we have all of the basics uh, in order to understand the two particles based on the nature of the particles, either the particles are non-interacting non particles and further particles are uh, distinguishable and uh, or we can simply say that the particles are fermions or bosons. But, and you, you could have the, you could uh, get uh, or face any type of uh, uh, particles, uh, particles, any type of uh, combination of particles. Now, if uh, we simply now focus on this example where we will take the three different cases and uh, we will try to understand how to deal with them whenever we will be asked to find the first uh, ground state, first uh, excited state and all of the energies related to the states. Let's start this example. Okay, suppose we have two non interacting particles and uh, both have mass M. Uh, both are in infinite square well. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, this one is the problem we already solved in section 2.2 in quantum mechanics one in, in the last semester. Okay, so what we have already information about such case that uh, we simply get one particle states and that is psi n of x equals 2 over a under root sin of n pi x over a and the energy equals n square k where k pi square h cut square 2 m a square. Now, if the particles are distinguishable, the composite, composite wave functions are simply products. And uh, simply we write like uh, psi of uh, n1, n2 of x1, x2 equals psi n, n1, psi n1, x1, psi n2, x2. And the uh, energies would be n1 square plus n2 square n2 k. Now, now from this expression, we simply get the ground state for the system. And uh, suppose by putting the n1 equals 1 and n2 equals 1, we get psi 1, 1 equals 2 over, 2 over a sine of pi x 1 over a into sine of pi x 2 over a. And uh, by putting the values n1, 1, and 2 equals 1, we get the energy for the ground state. That is equals 2k. Now, the, as for the ground state is concerned, that uh, should be doubly degenerate. How? Simply if you put n1 equals 1 and n2 equals 2, for the first time and then for the second time you put n1 equals 2 and n2 equals 1 you get psi 1 2 equals this expression and psi 2 1 equals this expression and as for the energies are concerned for these states you simply if you put n1 equals 1 and uh, n2 equals 2 uh, and the second time you put n1 equals 2 and n2 equals 1 you get e12 equals 5k and e21 equals 5k so it means you get the degenerate states. And uh, next, uh, if you put the, uh, <clears throat> sorry, next case, that is case two. Now, if you, if you say the two particles are identical and both are bosons, now what would, what would be the ground state? The ground state is unchanged. But the first excited state is not degenerate this time. 
Okay, now to derive the state, simply we need to use this expression now, which we already discussed in the in the previous slides. On the previous slide, psi psi plus one, r one r two equals this expression, and you. Uh, I hope you still remember that the plus sign would be used for the case when, whenever we have identical positives. So by putting our uh, n1, 1, and n2, 2, because uh, we already mentioned that the ground state is unchanged, now we are looking for the uh, first excited state. So psi 1, 2 equals this expression. And now by putting the values of, uh, now, now for getting the energies for the state, simply if we put the, uh, uh, psi 1 1 equals 2k, then uh, <clears throat> this would be the energy for this expression. E 1 2 equals 5k, and this would be the energy for this. And you can see we have a different energy this time. Now, the third case if the particles are identical fermions, but well, be the situation now. If uh, the particles are identical fermions, there is no state with energy 2k, and uh, the ground state would be psi 1 2 equals. This expression you see now we keep the negative sign here, and the energy would equal five five k. That you simply get by putting n one one and n two two, you get five k. 